Okay, we're going to try and fix this weird anomaly that when we change paint colors, it not only changes the paint color going forward, but also retroactively changes the paint color on the old arcs that we have. We're going to start by adding a couple of array lists. Okay, I've added two array list objects. At this time, we're going to, instead of storing an individual path for our entire drawing, we're going to have a combination of them, uh, each with its own paint object. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to refactor a method that we've already written, this init paint. Uh, I'm going to change this name to say add path because what we're doing here is not just creating a new paint object. What we want to do is create a new paint and a new path and put them both in our array lists. So this would be a good time to discuss how to refactor in Android Studio. So this is sort of the equivalent of doing a, a find and replace using an editor in Word. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this method right here, the name of it, and then we're going to say code, oh sorry, refactor, and we're going to say rename. And it's giving us some suggestions, but we're not going to use those. We're going to call this now add a path. And you can see that up here it's already changing uh, in this instance and every other instance in our code where we previously had init paint to change it to add path. Okay, so what we've done is we've changed this method now so that it it creates a new path, it adds it to the array list of paths, it creates a new paint and adds it to the array list of paints. Previously, where we were setting the pen color and uh, associating it with a paint object, we're going to move that now. We don't need that anymore because we're already setting the pen color right here. Back in our onDraw method, instead of drawing just one path object now, we're going to iterate through the array list and draw them all. Now here in this app I'm using this parallel array list structure where every paint array list member has an associated path array list member. This is not a good object oriented technique to use because it's possible that these two array lists could fall out of sync with one another. A better strategy would be to use something called a pair object and to have that associated with a path and a paint and then to create a single array list using these uh, pair objects. However, that's an added complication that we're going to avoid in this already complicated app and instead we're going to simply use this uh, parallel list structure that we've shown. Back in our onTouch method inside our case statement, we now need to add a line that's going to allow us to add a new path each time the user puts their finger down on the canvas. Okay, I've added this add path call to every time uh, the user presses on the canvas. Now we have to remember to allocate memory for the array lists that we have declared. Now we're ready to test the app by running the emulator. And now if I draw and change the color, you can see that the color change only affects the new arcs. Likewise, we can test the dot size and see that only affects the new arcs as well. Any combination thereof. And you can see our app is working well. There are two things we have left to do now. We need to introduce some code to make this reset function work and we also need to have a capability of drawing dots by touching and release at the same point on the canvas. We're going to do that now. To make this reset button come alive, we're going to go back into our code and add just a couple of lines to clear the canvas. Now we already have a method that clears the canvas. You may not realize it, but that's what happens with this init method because what this is going to do is create a new array list which is essentially going to destroy the old array list of paths and paints. So all I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to call that init method and to force the canvas to get redrawn, I'm also going to call the invalidate method. And back here in the main activity, when the reset button gets pressed, we have to, in addition to calling the drawing pad reset method, we need to update the dot size text view so that it shows the default dot size once again. Okay, there's a reset working in the dot side. Let's just make sure that gets changed also. And looks like we've got the reset working. Now we need to add one last piece of code to sense if the user touches and releases at the same point on the canvas. 
So to do that, I'm going to go back here where my uh, state variables are defined. And where I have mx and my, I'm going to add two new ones called uh, m old uh, x and m old y. And my goal is to take the old values of the coordinates, compare them with the new values, and if they turn out to be exactly the same, to place a dot on the canvas. That's the strategy. So coming back to where the touch happened, what we need to do before we leave here is we need to update the uh, new values to the old values. And I should probably initialize the old values just to be safe. Okay, and now when we have an action up, we need to figure out if the uh, location is the same as the previous place where the user had touched, and then we'll put a little circle there. So I'm going to compare the two coordinates, and if they match, I'm going to put a little circle on the screen. This is the location where it's going to be placed. This is the size of the radius, and this shows whether the circle will be drawn in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction, which does not matter for our app. So let's try this out now. And we can see that we're getting the circles, but we're not getting them quite filled in because we've set our style to stroke instead of uh, fill. And we're getting this other artifact when we draw a line, we're getting a circle at the end of it. So we're going to fix both of these things now and that will pretty much uh, conclude our app. In our add pad method, we sometimes want to create a paint object with the fill turned on and other times if we're just drawing lines, we want to have the fill turned off and just use a regular stroke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a parameter to this method asking whether the user wants to do a fill or not. And if the user does not want to do a fill, only then will we set the paint style to be a stroke. Otherwise, we'll just let it default to be fill. Now we have to go through and find all the places where we initialize this add path and decide whether we wanted to have a fill there or not. And now we should be ready to test the app with this uh, circles being filled in. And now we see our circles are filled in nicely, and now we just have to fix this artifact. After we draw the line, we want to get rid of this circle. To fix that problem, we could write a lot of code, but there's a much simpler solution. We can simply reduce the size of the radius to match the width of the line, and then our lines will simply get a nice rounded edge to them. And just to be consistent, I want to add one of these circles to the beginning of every path as well. And now when we test this feature, we've got nice rounded edges on our lines, so we've taken a potential problem and turned it into a feature. And I can do this with lines of any size now. And that's the conclusion of our PaintPot app.